Okay. Because this is actually something that we do in the beginning of pre-calculus. You know how like Algebra 2, sometimes a lot of times we review actually. We go over stuff that we've already done. This is stuff that we, we actually do in the pre-calculus curriculum as well. So um, when you guys get to pre-calc, this would be a review going over. So the main important thing, guys, is these are your zeros, right? Remember, these are what make your function equal to zero. But the thing is, we don't know what the function is. We don't know what the polynomial is. All we know is that these are your zeros. These are your x-intercepts of the graph. So the first thing I need to do is I know that these are your x-intercepts. So therefore, I can set x equals negative 1, x equals 1, and x equals i squared of 6. Now, the difficult thing with this problem is you guys need to remember the conjugate root theorem. That says that whenever you have a complex number as a root or a 0, that you have to make sure you include the conjugate. So now we need to make sure we also include, we also say x equals negative i square root of 6. All right? So therefore, now we actually have all four of these zeros. So we say x equals all four of these zeros, right? Because that when they have the x-intercept, we know we have an x value where y value is equal to 0, right? An x-intercept, x you have a value for, y is equal to 0. So what we're going to do then is let's set these then equal to 0. So to do that, I add 1 to both sides, subtract 1 to both sides. Subtract i squared of 6 to both sides. And then I add i squared of 6 to both sides. So therefore, I have x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x minus i squared of 6 equals 0, and x plus i squared of 6 equals 0. So, oh, not yet it. Now, so therefore, we got to this point. We say all three of these zeros, they all equal 0. But remember, where did we get to this? Well, we got to this by applying the zero product property. So what that means is x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus i squared of 6 times x plus i squared of 6 equals 0. Right? Because if you're given this problem, if, I, if you took a polynomial and you factored it to this form, if I said find the zeros, what you would do is say, oh, this times this times this times this equals 0. That means this equals 0, this equals 0, that equals 0, or that equals 0. And then you solve for x, and you'd find all your zeros. So now, I have the zero product property, but the only reason why we use the zero product property is we said our, we wanted to find when our function value equals 0. Now, we're not trying to find the values when our function equals 0. We are given those values when it's equal to 0. Now, what we want to do is find the function, or find the polynomial. So what we need to do for that is, rather than saying, oh, this equals 0, we're going to say, what does this equal? So now I need to do is multiply these. So ladies and gentlemen, I've showed you how to do this um, by using the box method, right? And I think that's the easiest way when you have a lot of multiplication. But the, the, this problem, you guys should notice, if I multiply these two, this is a difference of two squares, isn't it? So I, don't, I can do the box method if you have trouble multiplying, or just use difference of two squares. Uh, multiply the first two numbers, multiply the last two numbers. This multiplied is also difference of two squares. Multiply the first two numbers, multiply the last two numbers. So let's kind of go through this a little bit quicker. This becomes x squared minus 1 times this becomes x squared. Now, here's where a lot of students will make a mistake, so I'll write this out. Negative i squared of 6 times i squared of 6. So how do you multiply negative i times square root of 6 times i squared of 6? Yes? So I'm going to have negative i right, squared and then times the square root of 36. What? Which is just 6. So then I have i squared, which becomes what? Yes. So we have i squared, which be gives us negative 1. Negative 1 times negative is going to become a positive 1. Positive 1 times 6 is 6. So therefore, this one is just going to be x plus 6. Okay? Now, for this one, it might be a little bit more difficult. Um, you could do it in your head, but obviously that's where a lot of mistakes come in. So let's, uh, let's create a box for this one. And what I'll do is I'll say x squared plus 6 on the top, 
and x squared minus 1. Now, you could have done this for both multiplication problems if you wanted to. If you need that organization and that step-by-step -step process, then write out both boxes and do it. That's perfectly fine. Um, but to me, I noticed these are different to two squares, so I was like, I can kind of quickly do this. So x squared times x squared, now you find the area of each box. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 6 is 6x squared. x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. And negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. We notice that my diagonal, those are like terms, so I can combine those. So therefore, my polynomial is f of x, which I'll call it, equals x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 6. Good. I don't know. I don't know where you might have made. I don't know where I graded. But does everybody understand kind of what you do? So what we're doing is just working backwards. Yes? Negative 3 squared is 3 squared times negative 1. If I want it, it does not equal, you need to write it in parentheses, negative 3 squared. Do you understand i squared is negative 1? Yeah. So negative 1 times negative is going to be a positive. Right? So you've got to make sure you square it first, then multiply by the negative. Okay. All right? Unless, if I write it like this, that's when you would square negative one, but we're, but you got to follow the order of operation. You got to do exponents first. Okay, there's your homework quiz. <laughs>